Today on Nugget Cast, we're exploring VMware? Like, virtual machines? Oh, come on, what can go wrong with having 100 servers in a tight little room? All right, everybody, listen up. Budgets are tight, and since we don't want to get rid of any of you, we've decided to consolidate our office space. So welcome to your new office. Now let's get in there and get some work done. Jenkins, what's the problem? You got an issue with tight spaces? I don't want to hear any of that claustrophobic garbage. Now get to work, I'm saving your job here. Can someone please hand me a stapler? Welcome to NuggetCast, I'm your host Steve Barth and today we're exploring VMware, a product which gives you the ability to set up virtual machines. Why is this necessary? We'll take a look at our opening sketch and think of each person as a single physical computer running a single dedicated application such as a web server or a SQL server as they all cram into a little space that was common with old school server rooms. Think of this as a before VMware virtualization scenario. So what would the after VMware scenario look like? Yeah, lots of space and ease as each server is running multiple virtual servers. So today let's take a deeper look at virtualization with VMware with CBT Nuggets trainer Keith Barker. Keith Barker, welcome to NuggetCast. How you doing today? I am doing great. Thanks for having me, Steve. Awesome. So today we're talking VMware. So I'm a debate coach, and what I always ask my students to do when we're practicing debate is define our terms. So let's let's figure out what we're talking about. Let's define our terms in an idealistic, you know, Paradise City sort of way. What is VMware? Okay, that's a great start. So VMware is a company. Da da da. There it is. <laughs> and and VMware specializes on virtualization. And, and virtualization itself, that might be, a, it might be a familiar concept for some and new to others. So let's talk about the virtualization, what that is. Many years ago, uh, for example, let's say a decade ago, if we wanted to roll out servers, we would do something like this. We would do an order, get a physical server, it would arrive. We would then install software. Maybe we want a web server or a SQL server or a database server, whatever. We would install the software and then be up and running. So then if we wanted another server, a second server, guess what we'd have to do? build another one. Yeah, same process. You acquire new hardware, you build the server, you install the software, and you get it going. Now the challenge is, is that having a room full of servers, on average, you might have some servers that are like 5% utilized, others that are you know 20% utilized, but we're wasting a whole bunch of CPU and memory that are just sitting there not being used. So virtualization is all about taking multiple physical systems and the software and apps that are running on those and then condensing them into uh, fewer numbers of uh, physical servers, computers, and then having virtualized servers running in each of them. So instead of having 20 physical servers with 20 physical 20 um, apps running on one on each, we could have maybe three servers with all those virtualized services running on that same hardware. It just it makes a lot more sense because we don't have to have a single physical server for each single physical or uh, single virtual application. So what then is a template? That's a word I've heard used with this. Gotcha. Um, maybe we've heard about templates for success. Like if you follow these instructions, you'll end up with a successful result. Well, in a virtualized world, a virtual machine, instead of having to install, let's think about Windows or Linux, instead of taking the install CD and installing it every single time, what we can do is we can create what's like a, a almost perfect image of what we want our virtual machine to look like. And then we can create a template out of that. And it's like cookie cutters. If you need another five or 10 servers, you simply launch five or six, you know, five or 10 more from the template and it rolls them out, including changing things like the security identifiers and the MAC addresses and everything else. Makes it very automated. Now this is not to get around licensing. We still need to license a vendor's products for each, our usage, but it certainly makes it a lot faster to roll it out instead of having to Instead of taking an hour or two hours to roll out an operating system, we could do it in like five or 10 minutes. Great, so why exactly then are companies flocking to virtualization? Is it just the um, space savings? 
Um, part of it is the space savings. You don't have to have 15 physical servers for 15 physical apps, but they also have the benefit of power savings. And instead of you know, powering on 15 devices, if they have three, they might be able to cut down their power by 50% or more just by having it there. Another benefit too is the speed in which we can roll out a server. You know, the development team needs a new SQL server or web server. Uh, we could you know, roll one out using a template just in minutes as opposed to possibly hours or days as it used to be. Awesome. So tell us about these ESXi hypervisor. What, what exactly is that? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, first of all, I love the term ESXi. It has the, you know, has the three letters that if you rearrange them can spell sex, but I don't know if that was intentional or not. But uh, what an ESXi host is, that is software running on a computer that creates this virtualized playground. So on a physical computer, we'd install the ESXi host software and then on top of that, we'd have our virtualized machine. Maybe we have like 15 Windows, uh, 10 or 15 Linux machines, and whatever other operating systems we're going to run. And ESXi is the, the mothership, if you will, that hosts and is uh, playing the, uh, the hosting role for all the virtual machines that are running on that computer. Okay, so if an ESXi hypervisor is at capacity and it uses up all of its resources, what then? Okay, I, I'm with you. So uh, let's say you have a company that's consolidated and they've said, okay, instead of having 15 physical servers, we're gonna have maybe two or three. What happens, or what VMware offers as part of something called vSphere, which is a fancy way of saying a lot of the pieces that go into a virtualized environment. It involves the ESXi host, as you mentioned, and also a product called vCenter to manage it all. We could, for example, at, at 2 a.m. and let's say at 4 a.m. in the morning, we may have very little need for a server. So at that time, what we could do is we could have maybe one of our physical servers hosting all the virtual machines that are needed during that time. But then maybe Monday morning comes around and people are using virtualized desktops and so forth. And we need and one ESXi host says, I'm out of memory, I'm out of CPU power. With distributed resource scheduler and distributed power management, we can actually have a second or third ESXi host kick on and then automatically, you know, automatically distribute the load across those servers. So it's the systems are on when you need them. They can scale down when you don't need as many. That saves power. It also saves on the life cycle for a physical device as far as how long it can run. And it's uh, here's the crazy thing. It works and, and people use it big time. And that's a big benefit to save on power and also not have to pay for resources that we're just not using. Awesome. So what are the biggest savings then when using virtualization? That's a great question. So as far as savings go, probably the we're not going to save money for licensing of the actual you know operating systems because if you're using 10 copies of you know Windows 8.1, you need to pay for 10 copies of Windows 8.1. But where it does, and you have to purchase you know physical hardware, so there's not really a saving in the capital expense immediately. But operationally, think about it. <laughs> for let's say you have a new sales department or you have new engineering or human resources. You need to bring up new virtual machines for those users. That can be done in minutes. Let's say there's a new patch that comes out. If we're using Horizon View and we're using a, a replica of a linked clone, we could go ahead and make a patch or update a patch, test it, verify it, and we could roll that out to dozens or hundreds or thousands of virtual desktops in what hours for thousands, but a very short period of time versus having an operating system running on every single customer's machine, which would take days or possibly months to roll out that patch. So what's the takeaway? What do you want people leaving this podcast knowing about VMware? I would strongly recommend that you become at least familiar with VMware. A great way to start with that is a VCA, the VMware Certified Associate. Very simple, just the concepts. And if you love it and want to jump in more deep, the next step would be the VMware Data Center Virtualization Specialist or VCP, the v uh, Visa. VMware Certified Professional in Data Center Virtualization. And then there's other areas as well, Des uh, desktop virtualization and orchestrating large environments and so forth. But the starting point would be a VCA for the concepts and then the VCP for Data Center Virtualization. Keith Barker, you are amazing. Thank you so much for making subjects that may sound a bit intimidating, very easy and exciting. Now, if you want additional information about VMware and virtualization, check out the library of awesome training courses available to you at cbtnuggets.com. So let's wrap up this episode. Remember, you can contact us with topics you'd like to see us cover in future episodes right here. Also, remember, we have a growing library of past shows that you can watch on iTunes, on YouTube, and the CBT Nuggets blog. 
We'll see you next month, and until then, don't cram too many servers in a tight little space. I need my space, man. I need my space! Motivation. <laughs> Overexcited. All right, everybody, listen up. I have a stapler. <laughs>